Hello. When you first start to learn integration in calculus, once you get past the, the definition of antiderivative and some you know simple polynomial type of examples for the most part, um, you learn about u substitution as a as a major technique of solving integration integrals. The the u substitution technique is the antiderivative uh, analog to the to the chain rule in derivatives and uh, it turns out to be very useful. So um, the next one I want to show you is called integration by parts and it happens to be the antiderivative analog to the product rule of der derivatives. So let me show you where it comes about. We'll derive this and um, if we start with the product of two functions u times v. These are functions of x by u of x, v of x. They're, they're symbolic for two functions and if I take the derivative with respect to x then we have to apply the, the product rule, which means that we're going to take the derivative of u times v plus the derivative of v times u. Now I'm going to write that in slightly different order. This would be uh, v times the derivative of u, that would be du over dx, plus uh, u times the derivative of v over dx, so u times dv over dx. All right, so that's just uh, nothing more than the product rule and uh, from derivatives. Now, uh, if I multiply through this equation by the differential dx, cancel all those dx's, then we have uh, this differential equation, d of uv equals v du plus u dv. And my goal is to isolate this term. You'll see why in a few minutes why we want to isolate this term. So I'm going to subtract this to get it over on this side, but I'm going to write that first. So u dv would equal to the differential of u times v minus this term, minus v du. And um, there are differentials in each part of the equation. It literally is a differential equation. And so now I can uh, solve this, or at least eliminate the differentials, by integrating. And um, so I'm going to integrate both sides. Now when we integrate the right side, we can distribute the integral sign, because integration is a, is a linear operator. So not everything in life works that way, but integration can be distributed across a sum or difference. Not across a product, but across a sum or difference of functions. And so that allows us to split the right side into two integrals. Okay, now then, um, the, uh, the left side is going to stay the same, integral u dv. And on the right side, when you integrate this differential, it's just going to cancel the differential. Literally, this integral sign cancels the differential. I'm left with u times v minus, and I'll rewrite this, integral of v du. All right, so there we go. Now, in uh, being um, an indefinite integral, you could reasonably ask, well, what about that plus c, you know, plus the constant? It turns out we don't need that, okay, because we, we apply that when we work problems and um, that are indefinite integrals. We'll, uh, we'll see that plus c come up, but as a, as a formula, we can ignore it pretty safely here. So this is, um, this is the little formula known as integration by parts, and uh, the integral u dv equals to u times v minus the integral of v du. And so you, uh, you want to memorize this pretty quickly, you will, and, uh, but if you're wa watching this video, I would say write this down, make sure you have it right there, because I, I, I need some board space, so I'm going to erase everything off here. And um, next I'm going to start working some, some rather standard um, problems using integration by parts. And um, the challenge at, at the beginning becomes, well, how do you decide what part of a large integral is the u part, which part is the dv part, okay? And uh, when you're inexperienced, that takes a little bit of trial and error <laughs> before you really start to see what you have to do. And, um, but this technique is, is quite useful. It's, uh, it can solve a lot of, you know, rather fairly common looking functions, you might say, as far as integration. So anyway, make sure you have this written down and I'll start working some, some examples next. 
Our first example is integrating x e to the minus x dx. So um, you won't be able to integrate this by using a substitution uh, technique, ordinary substitution. It uh, just won't make any headway. But let's try something else. I'm going to use or, or let um, u be x. I'll explain my choices here after I do the problem. Let u be x, and I'm going to let e to the minus x dx be dv. All right, so let me just kind of highlight that here. This part I'm choosing to be the differential dv, and this part is function u. So as you can see, when you pick the differential dv, you, you often, very often, usually throw in something else. Um, in fact, you may always have to do that for this technique. I've got to think about that. Anyway, um, let's work it out. Now, I, in order to apply the, <laughs> the integration by parts formula, I need to know what du is. I need to know what v is. So du is just a differential of both sides. That would be dx. And v will be the antiderivative of e to the minus x. So if I integrated both sides of this little equation up here, I would get v on the left side and we get minus e to the negative x on the right side. And so that's, um, and of course, when you convert to v, you've eliminated the, the um, differential because you integrated both sides. Okay, so um, I now have the, the elements needed for the integration by parts formula. This would equal to u times v, which would be x times negative e to the minus x, so that's minus x e to the minus x, and then minus the integral of v, which is this term, du, which is dx. All right, so here is u times v minus v times the integral of v times du. Um, all right, so let's see what happens. And the two negatives here will, will cancel. That's good. And I end up with the integral of minus x e to the negative x. And then integrate e to the minus x, again, will be, we'll change the sign, negative e to the minus x. And then um, and plus a constant. All right, so you know, don't forget your plus c if it's an indefinite integral. We need that, uh, that plus c. Um, so there it is. It, it's done. And you can, you can verify by taking this derivative that it will turn out to be x e to the minus x when you get done. And it's, not, it's a really good, good idea to check your integration that way anyway by uh, taking the derivative of your, of your final answer. <clears throat> okay, now let's, uh, let's kind of look at what happened here. Why did I make these choices? Why didn't, for example, and I'll just write down here. Going from up here, how come I didn't let um, u be e to the minus x and dv be equal to x dx. All right, well, um, all, all well and good here because differential u would be negative e to the minus x dx. But v, when I integrate both sides, v would be x squared over 2. And so now, when I plug in the integration by parts formula, the v du part will end up being the integral of minus x squared over 2 times e to the minus x. So the, the, this part of the integration by parts formula, the integral of v du, would look like the integral of minus x squared over 2 e to the negative x dx. So I wanted you to see that that was the wrong order in which to choose because we took x and we stepped it up to x squared. And now I have something worse. It's worse instead of x times e to the minus x, now I have x squared times e to the minus x and uh, plus a little bit of other stuff. So um, that's why you're going to find when you're first doing this, you might make some wrong choices and you might have to start over because <laughs> you'll end up something where you can't, can't integrate. And so uh, that's, that's very normal in learning integration by parts. But um, the idea was here to, was to step down this, this power of x. It's, its derivative is 1, and so that was the, turns out to be the natural choice for for the use substitution in the integration by parts. Okay.
Well, let's go on to a new example. Now let's try integrating x squared times cosine of x dx. And um, it's, it's ripe for integration by, by parts. And uh, the trouble is, uh, when, I, when I do this, I'm going to actually, actually have to do this process twice. Because the derivative process steps x squared down to an x term. And then we'll have to, we'll end up with an x times a trig function. And then we'll have to apply the same technique again in order to go down to just the trig function. So this will, this will unfold as we work this problem. So anyway, let's start off with letting um, u be x squared and dv be this part. The dv is cosine of x dx. All right, so the, um, and, and one more time, let me highlight that. I, uh, and of course, they're not always organized in this nice order as u dv, but uh, this one and the last integral are. All right, so um, I've uh, chosen to make this part the dv. Well, the um, differential u du is 2x dx, and v, integrate both sides here, v is going to be sine x, positive sine x when you integrate the cosine. So we end up with um, u times v is x squared sine x minus integral of v times du. So du is 2x sine x dx. So 2x sine x dx. There we go. So you always have to ask yourself, did I make progress? We did because we've gone from an x squared cosine to just an x sine. In other words, we step the power down by one. However, I still don't have a, a technique for this other than integration by parts, so I'm going to have to do integration by parts again. So I'm going to let um, u, in this case, u will be x and dv will be sine, let me, let me write this to the left here so I have a little more room. Uh, try that again. Uh, u will be x and uh, du, I'm sorry, dv is sine x dx. There we go. And uh, this differential, du, is simply dx. And v, integrate both sides, integral of sine is going to be minus cosine, so minus cosine of x. And, um, and again, when you're, when you're working this out, you don't have to think about the plus c part over here. It, it, it would not matter, <laughs> okay? It would not matter, I don't think. Let's see, v, du. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Well, see, it's typical in these videos. I'll, I'll have new ideas I haven't thought of before and haven't thought through, but uh, we never put that plus c there, so I think you would find it would, would, uh, would not matter. In any event, let's, uh, let's go ahead and work this out. Now, I've got uh, this term is, stays where it is, x squared sine of x, and then minus, I'm going to factor the 2 out. And because when I apply integration by parts, I end up with two terms. I'm going to put a big bracket here. So I have the minus 2 factored out. I can do that. Integrating this, I have u times v, so that's minus x cosine of x. And then minus the integral of v du, minus cosine x dx. There we go. And um, so what happens here? We have, so we have to be careful about the negative signs. The, if I distribute the negative inside there, it's going to cancel here. And it's going to cancel one of these. I'll make it cancel that one. <laughs> okay, so be careful about the negative signs. It's, it is easy to, to screw that up. All right, so let's see what we have. We have x squared sine x, um, then plus 2x cosine x, plus 2x cosine of x. And then when I integrate cosine, I get positive sine, so it's going to be minus sine times 2, minus 2 sine x. And then, um, and then we'll put that plus c in. So there it is. There's the plus c. There we go. Um, so um, another successful integration. I think you'll, I'm sure you'll find that if you 
take the derivative of all this mess, you'll end up with x squared cosine of x. And um, so there we go. So now you've seen that sometimes we have to do integration by parts twice in order to uh, to get an answer. And it could you know it could go high. I mean. Imagine the nightmare, x to the 100th power times cosine of x. You'd have to do integration by parts about 100 times. And uh, it just, eh, be a horrendous mess. <laughs> so, anyway, there's no magic on, on those integrals, unfortunately. Fortunately, those functions just don't crop up in real life. x to the 100th cosine of x, not going to see that, that I know of. Anyway, all right, well, let's go on to a new example. Here we have a, a, a small one, the, nat the integral of the natural log of x, one of my favorite little integrals. And um, we have no, up to now, we have no antiderivative for the natural log function. We, um, we know that the natural log comes from integrating 1 over x dx. That's the natural log. Um, however, how would you integrate natural log? All right, well, it turns out integration by parts will, will, will take care of it. And um, I think I answered a question I put up earlier. The, uh, the dv part, um, in rare cases, can just be dx. That works. So that, uh, that actually is okay for that to happen. All right, so let's see. Um, I want to... <laughs> natural log, you know, any logarithm set, uh, is... It's kind of tough when you deal with integration. And so if I could change that logarithm into something different, it, it may be a lot easier. And uh, the only thing I know to do is to take the derivative of natural log. Derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So I'm going to let u be my natural log function. And uh, it's all right. So let u be natural log of x. And dv is just dx. Okay. And then uh, we'll take this derivative. We get or differential, du, is 1 over x dx. And v, integrate both sides, v is just simply x. So I end up with the integral, oh, sorry, u times v, okay. So u times v is x natural log of x. And then we um, subtract the integral of v du, well, that would be x times 1 over x dx. So that's kind of interesting. The, uh, the x is canceled. I'm just integrating dx. So I end up with x natural log of x minus, um, when you integrate 1 dx, you're just going to get x, and then plus a constant. So there it is. There's the antiderivative to the natural log function. And sometimes people will, will factor an x out. I don't know if that's uh, so critical here, but you could factor an x out of the, the non-trivial part. Um, question is, normally when we get a natural log when integrating, we, we put absolute value bars on it, but the, the presence, uh, lack of presence of absolute value bars here implies that we have to be working where x is positive anyway, so I don't, I don't think we have to worry about absolute value bars on, on this problem. But uh, All right, so there's... Um, uh, possibly one of the very shortest integration by parts problems there are. Okay. This next example is one of the trickier uh, standard examples you get with integration by parts. It's an exponential function times a trig function. And um, it uh, <laughs> definitely is a bit different here. So let's, let's just dive right into that. It, uh, I, I don't believe it matters what you choose for u and what you ch choose for dv in this, in this problem. That's, that's kind of interesting. And um, I think I'll just go ahead and make uh, e to the 2x um, u and then sine x dv. And so, uh, but you could reverse that and I think it would be perfectly fine. Anyway, um, let's let u be e to the 2x, like I said, and dv is sine x dx. Now, I, I kind of like that choice for u and dv because when I take this derivative du, I get 2 e to the 2x. And um, had I made this the, the dv part, when I integrated, I would have gotten e to the 2x divided by 2. So it's, in a way, it avoids a fraction early on here. Um, 
All right, integrate both sides here. I get v equals to minus cosine of x. Right. And uh, so when we plug this in, I end up with u times v. So that's going to be, you know, e to the minus e to the two x times cosine of x. So it's minus um, e to two x cosine of x, and then minus the integral of v times du. So I end up with minus two e to the two x cosine of x dx. All right. And, um, and let's let's go ahead and, and I'll clean it up a little bit. Minus e to the two x cosine of x plus two integral e to the two x cosine of x dx. All right. So you could you could reasonably say, well, how was that progress? How was that progress? Uh, because we went from e to the two x sine x to integrating e to the two x cosine of x. Okay, well, that didn't do us any good. This is almost the same integral as that. Well, and uh, but there's the trick. We, we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. Integration by parts, and you'll see why this is going to work out. So I integrate, uh, I'm going to try this type of substitution again. I'm going to let u be e to the 2x. Okay. And by the way, if you let u be cosine of x, I think you'll pretty much end up with uh, I just don't think it's going to work. <laughs> okay, uh, would it? Ah, oh, it might work. Who knows? But uh, I'm going to I'm going to keep the same pattern here. So u is e to the two x, and then dv is cosine of x dx. All right. So du will be two e to the two x, and dx. You know what? I I made a little mistake up there. I was supposed to write a dx here. So. Make sure you fix that in your notes. I don't want to redo this tape for that. But make sure you, you, you fix that dx there. Sorry about that. And then uh, v, integrate here, v would be sine x. All right, so there we go. Now when I recopy this, I have this term, which is, is done. And I'm going to bring this down a little lower. It's, it's a little, little bit of a long problem for this size board here. Minus e to the 2x cosine of x plus this two, bracket, uh, u times v, e to the 2x sine x, minus uh, integral of v du, so minus 2, let me write that a little clearer here, minus this two, times um, e to the 2x sine x dx, e to the 2x sine x dx. Okay, so there we go. Um, so when you look at this, you say, okay, the unfinished part is this integral. Now look what happened. I had the same integral here as I started with. What to do? <laughs> well, this is for, oh, telephone. I'll be right back. Cut. I'm back. This is another one of those junk, uh, telephone calls that not worth answering from out of state. They're just asking for money or votes, usually money. Anyway, uh, where are we at here? All right, so here I have the unfinished integration is the original integration. So like I said, there's a very simple uh, answer to this problem here. I'm going to let this integral, I'm going to call it i. And here is the same integral here. This is I. Okay, so actually what I have is a little equation to solve. <laughs> and so I'm going to erase all the middle part here and then we'll, uh, we'll finish the problem. So hang on a minute here. So I erased the middle part of the board and I took this part and kind of cleaned it up in a, little, a little bit and put it up here. So I had my original integral which I, I called letter I Here's e to the minus 2x cosine of x, and this is 2, e to the 2x sine x. Over here, I've got 2 times negative 2, negative 4 times i, minus 4i. And so what's going to happen? If I add 4i to both sides, I'll have 5i over here. And so 5i equals to this part, and then I'll divide by 5. You know, very, 
if you think about it, it's a very simple uh, linear equation. So my integral, which is i, e to the 2x sine x dx, will be one fifth times this part, and I'm going to factor out e to the 2x. So it's one fifth, let me write that a little better, e to the 2x times um, negative cosine of x plus 2 sine x, and then plus a constant. So I don't have to worry about doing one-fifth times a constant because one-fifth times a constant is still a constant, isn't it? So there we go. Um, this problem, we had to recycle the integration by parts formula, but do it twice, and it turned into um, uh, its own equation because we ended up with the same integrals we started with in it. And uh, so there you go. If, you, if you're wondering, is this, does this show up? Does this crop up anywhere? And uh, I believe I've seen this come up in problems, typical problems, some typical problems in differential equations. It, uh, at some point, it seems like we, we run into these in differential equations. We also have some other techniques for solving those using complex numbers. So anyway, that's a, that's a long story uh, down the road for you if you're going on to differential equations. But um, that's a technique that's... Um, Definitely worth learning there. Okay. This last example for this video is a, it's a pretty challenging one, and um, I, I found it in a, in a textbook we're not currently using. We used to use it. This is um, from Stewart, and this was the seventh edition, and uh, I picked it up out of that, that book. I just thought I should give some credit to, to the author of that book for think, dreaming up this problem. Anyway, uh, we're integrating x e to the 2x dx over 1 plus 2x quantity squared. And um, looking at where in the world would you start? You know, would, uh, it, now if you knew this wasn't a video or, or a section on integration by parts, you, you might think about other techniques. Maybe, um, maybe just a simple use substitution will work here. Don't believe it will. And um, so the integration by parts ends up working here and the secret to this one I think can be found here if you take this derivative x e to the 2x you're going to get a 1 plus 2x appear will appear in it and, uh, and you think well hopefully down the road that's somehow going to cancel it'll make a difference so um, it turns out it does this is a kind of a special you know rigged problem where everything just works out fantastic but um, anyway the um, Let's try that then. So, it, but as you might expect, uh, you try and uh, integration by parts. You know, if you didn't see that, it might take some trial and error to get this one. So it's it is admittedly a pretty tricky problem. All right. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to let you be the numerator here. X e to the two x and dx will be the denominator. I'm sorry, dv. Dv will be dx over 1 plus 2x squared. Alright? And um, so the differential of u is going to be, I have a product rule here, so I have derivative of x times e to the 2x, so it'll be 1 times e to the 2x, and then plus this derivative times x, so the derivative of e to the 2x requires the chain rule, so it's e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x, so that's 2 there will be a 2 out of the chain rule here, times x, e to the 2x. And all that is d, uh, dx. Okay. Now then, like I said, let me continue to work with that one. du ends up being, if I factor e to the 2x out, I end up with 1 plus 2x dx. And so you think, well, that may be the right substitution, because somehow that might end up canceling that one off. Okay, so um, now this, um, to get V, I'm going to have to you know, integrate this problem here. And so V will be that integral. And uh, let's, let's make it 1 plus 2x to the minus 2 power dx. And uh, that, that in itself is not, not a breeze. Um, we could use a, the old standard u substitution here, let 
u would be 1 plus 2x and, and work it out. Um, but when you have linear terms, sometimes you can kind of guess your way to it. So if I integrate something to the minus 2 power, I expect to get minus times that something to the minus 1 power. And, um, and the reverse, you know, doing the chain rule gives you times 2, kind of the opposite is dividing by 2. And so it, it turns out this is correct. And, and let me rewrite a little more uh, normally here. This would be negative 1 over 2, parentheses 1 plus 2x. All right, so you can, if, if you check this, go backwards. If I take this derivative, I've got negative 1 times negative, that cancels. 1 plus 2x to the minus 2 power times this derivative, chain rule is 2, and that 2 will cancel the constant 2 down below. So you can you can go back and double check to make sure that was that was correct. Alright, so it's uh, a little cluttered up here. Let me um, let me do some erasing and I'll I'll put in my my uh, <laughs> what am I putting in? I'll put in my um, V there's V, and there's my du. And uh, I'll race all this other stuff, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right, I hope you're taking notes, because um, I had to erase a lot of the key information here. But uh, check your paper, or rewind the video. You'll see that I've got um, u times V is this expression here, minus the integral of V du. And uh, so that's all that mess there. And, uh, and now you see why this works so wonderfully, because the 1 plus 2x cancels in that integral, and, and while we're at it, we cancel the negative signs. So now I'm just integrating, um, let me rewrite it, minus x e to the 2x over 2 parentheses 1 plus 2x. Now I'm just integrating a positive um, e to the 2x over 2 dx. So, uh, that worked, that worked, um, it, uh, sometimes you get lucky, <laughs> however, I think this problem was probably, uh, probably rigged by the author, <laughs> um, in other words, he didn't just think of that, that function here, he, he took an answer and took the derivative and turned it into a, an integration problem. Okay, well, let's finish it up, so I have this term again, minus x, e to the 2x, over, oops, parentheses, 2 parentheses, 1 plus 2x. And then integrating e to the 2x will give me e to the 2x divided by 2 times the other 2. We end up with e to the 2x over 4. And, uh, and there's a plus a constant, of course. Now then, let's, um, let's clean that up a little bit. I'm going to, um, to get a common denominator, I'm going to need to multiply by 2 here. So 2 and 2, that gives me my 4. And then I'll need 1 plus 2x here, 1 plus 2x. And uh, so I'm going to, out of this part, I'm going to factor out um, e to the 2x over 4. So I have e to the 2x over 4. And what I have left, so here's e to the 2x over 4. I have minus 2x. And then over 1 plus 2x from that term, that's what's left over. And on this side, I've got um, plus 1 plus 2x over 1 plus 2x plus a constant. And then uh, I'm going to erase this so I have room to write our answers out. And if you look here, uh, common denominator, when I combine these terms, that the x's will cancel, so I end up with just a 1 on top. So I have a 1 over 1 plus 2x, so I end up with uh, this 1 times e to the 2x, e to the 2x over 4, parentheses, 1 plus 2x, plus a constant. So it is done, <laughs> and, uh, and there it is. So that, that, was, a, that was a tricky one, um, and, uh, and you'll probably find some problems tricky like that in, a, in a, any textbook and uh, so I've, uh, I've covered in this video mainly the the sort of the, the main patterns that crop up a lot where um, you 
For example, the first one was something like, what did we integrate, x times uh, sine x or x times cosine x? We, we've, we found a way to get rid of the x so we can integrate the trig function. Um, we saw another one where we had to apply this twice in order to do it. We integrated the natural log of x. And, and typically, when you have natural log of x, most of the time, u would be natural log of x because you want to take its derivative to get rid of the logarithm part and just end up with uh, some kind of a, you know, 1 over x type answer. And then uh, we did the <laughs> another favorite is the exponent function times a trig function like e to the x times cosine x. I forgot exactly which one we did, but it's similar to that where you, you turn it into an equation and solve. Then you have some of these tricky ones where you're just going to have to poke around and, and uh, hope for the best and pick out pick out uh, with a little bit of trial and error, pick out the correct uh, u and dv substitutions. So. Anyway, hope that uh, gets you off the ground for integration by parts.